All right, so we created a presentation or a spreadsheet. We can create a document. Another editing tool in Google Docs is um, that is familiar in Word. If you were to go to insert, you can insert an image, a drawing, a table, a link, an equation from Excel, um, comments, footnotes, all of these kind of things. Now, the nice thing um, that we can do is as teachers, we want to monitor the student's progress on something or th say they have a project where uh, a document is included in it. Every time that they update it or as they're working on it, we can comment on it. We can also comment on something to grade it and then send it back to them in their docs. So if we click on comment, it gives us a, a tag here where we can type and say, good job or whatever actually put a comment in based on whatever they're doing and it tags your name and the time and date that you sent it. So they can see every time that you put a comment on there um, if you want that to happen or you could just edit it but this um, makes it specifically that you are commenting on their work and not just um, you know editing it for them. So comments are Comments are very nice. Also, um, we can insert any image into it. If you have something from the internet, also Google Docs, you can just pull and drag. So if I had an image in a different browser or a different window, I can just pull and drag it straight onto the document and it will create the picture on the document, just like you would in Word. Check the spelling, look up words, just in word count. So anything that you can imagine that Word has, um, Google Docs has it or is working on to put it in there. Um, now, uh, Google Docs, I'll open up the acceptable use policy. All right, here's our school's acceptable use policy. If I go to see revision history, so under, under file, um, and I have this on the presentation that I'll share with you guys. Under File, if you go down to File and then uh, just scroll down a little bit, there's a See Revision History button. Okay, if we click on that, it brings us to every revision that has been done on the document. So there has been 132 revisions done. And I can see revisions 129 through 131. And then when I click on these revisions, uh, it tells me who who did it. Okay, so if I click on the revision here, I can see Blair McCullough did this last, and this is what it looked like when he did it on that day. If if that version is the correct version, then I can uh, revert to this one. So if the student deleted all the work, that work is still there, and I can revert back to the one before it was deleted. So, which is nice for the students also, if they make a mistake, they can always revert back to the previous one that uh, did not have the mistake. So, they never actually lose their work, and you can never be worried that uh, their work will be tampered with. All right, so that is a, a big part to Google Docs that, make, that sets them apart from just regular word processing. Again, if they were to use a student's USB or use each other's um, document on a USB or email attachments, then any document can be changed without seeing the previous version, unless you ha kept the copies of each version. So and then that creates lots of different copies on your computer or on your hard drive, where this just is on the internet and it gives you a layout of when and who each time. All right. Um, organizing your documents. Okay, so now you've created some. People have shared some with you, which I'll go over in just a little bit in the collaboration part. But if you go back to your Google Docs and we go to Create, New, and then go to Folder, it gives me a folder right here, which I can um, now put my documents into a folder. So I can name this folder um, PD. Okay, so if I, if I name the folder PD, um, I click on the rename button. Oh, I want this renamed. So I, I rename this PD. Now, 
I can take all my items in here just to make sure that this is nice and organized and I I can just drag it into my PD folder. Okay, so now, now that it's in my PD folder, it gives me a tag right here that says PD. If you guys can see that. It says PD next to it and it automatically tags all my documents. So, it's in my folder and it is tagged on my Google Docs page, on my home page. So I know that when I look at this, it's in my PD folder. If I were to click in my PD folder, it's the only one in there, Google Docs. Okay, so um, when I talk about collaboration, I'm going to go into that in just a little bit. Organization is a big part as far as if, if we assign projects with Google Docs to our students, um, just as if you were to assign something with an email attachment, uh, you would be getting hundreds of emails. At least I know I would. I teach four classes of 20 kids, you know, each. So 70 emails I'll be getting. And um, I, I don't want 70 emails because then my inbox is flooded with emails. So if they have documents, they can, they can add me onto their document. And the document then becomes mine as well. But I... I never will get email notifications and I can organize them into my different classes. So I can create a new folder that says uh, first period. And then, um, so I have my first period folder right here. And um, it's, I, I put that in there. Let's rename it. So my first period folder then, every uh, assignment that I get from my any student in my first period, I will just automatically drag it into my first period. So now I'm not just bombarded with 70 documents. I have them grouped into the different folders. Okay, so it'll keep it, keep it nice and organized for you. And then if you want to, you can keep them on your Google Docs page. But now... I know that my Google Docs presentation is in my PD because it's right there. I've already dragged it in. Um, I can do a couple things with it. Also, if you guys wanted to drag a couple, you can click on a couple and then drag and it'll, it says two items. And I'm dragging in there, but I, I don't want to do that. Or you could go to folders and click on the folder that you want it in. So if you wanted to put it in multiple folders which is nice. If you wanted to put it in PD and first period or first period and uh, Western expansion, if you were doing that, then if you made two folders for that, then I can click on both folders and apply changes. And now that document is in both folders and not just in uh, one folder. Okay, so it's nice that you can organize it however you'd like. So now I have 70 documents right here. And I have already put them into their folder, so when I click on them, the document is in my folder, but it is also on my page. It tells me right here, I don't want 70 documents on my page from all the students. So when I go to it, I can, now that I have it, I'm going to click on it, and I can hide it. So now it's hidden from my page here, but it is in my PD folder, because that's where I put it. So you can clean up your your Google Docs page. So here's all my items. I click on all items and my Google presentation is no longer on my front page because I hit it, but it is in the PD folder where I know that I put it. Now if you hide a bunch of things and you still can't find it, you could always uh, search for it right here and then click on search docs. Or you can owned by me. Okay, I I started that. I own it. Okay, This is just one that I started right now. Shared with me. Okay, And then I have it right here. Now, if I have something that um, I know that I shared with, or here's my file types, I can also search through file types. Um, and also you can do shared with me. Or, or shared with. Sorry, that's the one I want to do. If I know that I can't find a document, but I shared it with Jenny, then I can click on shared with and it'll show me all of the people that I have collaborated with and I can click on her name and it'll show me all the documents that I have actually shared with her. And then that's the way I can find it. So, all right, here 